and a little bit of history to the Cornish Heavy Cake. Well, this week I had an email from the wonderful Margaret Stevens, who is president of St Ives Old Cornwall Society. And I'm really pleased to say Margaret is with us now. Afternoon, Margaret. Good afternoon, Donna. Hello. Thank you ever so much for coming in onto the programme. Really appreciate it. Um, now, you were listening to last Sunday's interview, weren't you? And you wanted to share something about the St Ives version of the heavy cake. Yes. Well, can I correct you first? It isn't heavy. Ah, H E B B A. Now Heather was the call which was made when the pilchards were sighted. Right. Okay. So Heather. So H E V V A. I always thought it was pronounced heavy, but it's not. You've corrected me well and truly. Thank you, Margaret. Never again shall I say heavy. <laughs> um, so Heather was called from the shore when pilchards were sighted. Yes, that's right. And the, I think the cake originated, originated in the fishing villages. And so you're going to get variations from village to village. Right, OK. Goodness me, I never realised that. Because Marion was saying that um, often the cakes were taken out, you know, to sea by the, the big ships and so on um, as a kind of a, a parting gesture and then a come back again gift, um, which is interesting. So this maritime sea connection is very great with the heather cake. Yes, it is, yes, because um, the recipes were obviously part, they vary from family to family, even in the town. But it, it was as mother used to make it, and it was passed down through the generations. Now, the cake has a pattern on it, which is a lattice pattern scored on the surface, which would represent the net. Oh, is that right? And then well, the, the, um, when the fish were plentiful, of course, the families could afford the ingredients to make the cake. Yes, of course, of course. So there is that very, very close connection. When you had plenty of fish, you could have a cake. But, yes. you know, when times were hard, you certainly couldn't. That's it, yes. How interesting, my goodness. So in a moment or two, Margaret, would you give us the recipe for your or the St Ives version of the Heather cake? That would be wonderful. my version because I can hear people in St Ives, oh, I don't make it that way. <laughs> There's always going to be a variation, isn't there? Definitely. <laughs> but the, the version as your mother used to make, would you give right. us that version? That would be amazing. Okay. Um, I, I, I have converted it to grams, although I still work in ounces. Yeah, I do as well, funnily enough. I really do. I, I feel much more comfortable with ounces, certainly. So I'm going to ask everybody who would like to um, take down the recipe to get a pen and paper. So we'll have a, a, a minute or so to do that. And Margaret will give us the recipe, which would be wonderful. But uh, Margaret, you're president of the St Ives Old Cornwall Society. So, um, you know, have you lived in St Ives uh, all your life? Yes, yes. Um, we've been quite disappointed this year because just as any traditional celebration is an excuse to have a pasty, so it is with the Heather Cake. And unfortunately, our old Cornwall Society, like many others throughout the county, have been unable to celebrate Cry in the Neck, which is another tradition which the old Cornwall Societies hold dear. Yes, remind us about that ceremony, if you would, well, Margaret. The last... Um, sheaves of corn which are left by the farmer and then there is a ceremony we would have had ours at Zena, um but unfortunately the village hall is closed so we, we couldn't have uh, our celebration there mm. it's um it origin it, it's obscure the origin but it occur occurred here in cornwall at least two thousand years ago and it was originally associated with sun worship the old ceremony was to please the sun god Ceres for the next year's harvest, for the corn, the cereal, the cirrus, and um, the Christian missionaries ar arrived, and then, then the tradition was more applicable with a Christian approach. Right, and it's cry the neck, is that right? Yeah, cry crying, crying the neck, yes, crying the neck. Right, crying the neck. And what time of year does that... That's that usually happen? in August, but I know some uh, societies hold theirs in September, so maybe they will be able to have theirs. Right. And what usually has theirs in September. Yes, and what normally happens at one of these ceremonies then? Well, the farmer usually leaves the corner of his field with the um, corn still standing, and then with a scythe he will cut it, and it's lovely to just hear the sound of the scythe going through the, through the corn. And then he'll make it up into a, a sheaf, and um, we have a tradition that... 
he then cut holes one sheaf that he's made the, the, the large sheaf with, and he will cry um, that he's got the neck, and he'll do it to the four corners of the compass, north for the depth of winter, hence the Yule log tradition, the east for the springtime, the sowing, the south for the sun at its height, and that's when we celebrate the midsummer eve bonfires, the midsummer to, to ripen the corn, and then to the west is the harvest time. And just as the scripture reveals to us, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So it's, it's the tradition of the, or it's the motto actually of the old Cornwall Society, to gather up the fragments that are left, lest nothing be lost. And that's true with our traditions. We must keep them going. Oh, Margaret, do you know, I was completely captivated by that. Absolutely beautiful. You are right, so right, you know. And thank you for coming onto the programme and keeping these traditions alive because I'm sure there'll be so many people listening who've never heard of crying the neck and, you know, just hearing you speak about that is bringing it alive and, you know, keeping the traditions alive. And you're so right because there are so many parts of our country and certainly in our world where the old ways and the old traditions are being lost forever and once they're lost they very rarely come back and i think if, if anyone would like to look further on the federation of old cornwall websites there i think it's from colin liscard redruth different societies have got illustrations and write-ups about their ceremonies Wonderful, thank you. And I do hope that one of the ceremonies, maybe as you say, next next month, may be able to go ahead. But um, would you let us know um, about all of that? Yeah. That wonderful. Thank you so much. I I was going to ask you what it means to be part of the St Ives Old Cornwall Society, but that's a silly question because I can hear you know what it means um, in your heart. And have you always lived in St Ives? Have you always you know or or like Catherine? Did you move away? from your 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 home and then come back yes yes moved away trained away and then came back as soon as i could mm, so you missed it that much your sometimes is is who you are really yeah. and vice versa yeah. wonderful thank you so much for coming on to the program margaret would you give us the recipe for the St. Ives have a cake yes ingredients eight ounces 200 grams flour can you self-raising or plain right two ounces, 50 grams of margarine. Butter would not have been affordable. Right. Two ounces, 50 grams of lard. White vegetable fat is more healthy nowadays. Three or four ounces, 100 grams of sugar. Six ounces, 150 grams of currants, but I use mixed fruit. Okay. And approximately three tablespoonfuls of milk to mix. Lovely. And then what do you do? You just rub it all together? Yes. Rub, right. the, rub the fat into the flour. It can be done in a mixer, but don't do it up too long because it will be like a biscuit. Add the sugar and the fruit. Mix with milk and shape and roll out on a floured board. Or on greaseproof paper, it's easier to transfer it then to the baking tray. And you just make it into an oval or an oblong to fit the baking tray about quarter half an inch thick right and then you score a fine mesh net over the surface and brush with milk lovely and that is to represent the nets yes. and the catch yes and then you bake for about 15 to 20 minutes in the center of the oven 190 c 375 f or gas mark six right for about 15 to 20 minutes just keep an eye on it just have it lightly colored and the saying goes a bit of hot heather touched up light is rich oh how lovely a bit of hot heather touched up light is rich isn't that fantastic? Do you know, I'm going to make that, and, and I must say, I must apologise. I I, um, I did promise last week that I would make her have a cake, and I didn't get round to it. And I took a call, actually, from a lovely lady called Anne in Ludgevin, hello Anne, last week, who was also going to try and make the cake. But I shall make your version of the cake, Margaret, and I shall uh, report back next weekend, if that's all right. I will listen. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Oh, that is absolutely wonderful. Now, St Ives has been in the news recently hasn't it because it's a little bit busy at the moment is that certainly what you're finding well I wouldn't know because I haven't been down 
in the town during, in, in the sort of late morning, afternoon. I go down early and come back because I have heard that it is rather busy. Yes, yeah. So you have to pick your times, really, don't you? That's wonderful. All right. Well, Margaret, thank you. I hope that you'll come back onto our programme another time and tell us some more stories about St Ives. OK. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. You enjoy the rest of the sunshine as well. Thank you, Donna. OK, bye-bye then. Bye. Bye-bye. There we go. That's Margaret Stevens, president of St Ives Old Cornwall Society. Brilliant. And I must say hello to her, her husband, Brian, who Margaret told me on email. He knows an awful lot about the history of the Heather Cake as well. So thank you, Margaret and Brian.